Hey everybody, my name is Jeff. Today I got a little more on the John Deere 50. Had a piece of cast, it's part of a housing for the ventilator pump that goes on the fan shaft that had some grooves worn in it. And, well, it was bad enough where I didn't like the idea of just putting it back together as is and decided to machine it off. Well, I was going to put it in the mill, but it ended up where it's got a taper on like a normal pattern making for casting aluminum even or any other metal for that matter you have a taper to the piece and so it's about a three you know, probably three thousandths of an inch in about an inch and a quarter inch and a half that the taper is so trying to clamp it in the vise on the mill it wanted to still move on me pretty easy and I could have clamped it from the top and machine part of it then finish the rest uh, well, I'll try it in the forge jaw on the lathe and see what happens. And it actually did hold good in there. I didn't show much of the setup of that, but I got it set up, trued up within oh, half a thousandths and, and faced it off that way. So that part worked good for a change. And then I make a little pin for linkage of the clutch lever, which is just a little quickie on the lathe there. And, actually use it, I'll start out in the Hamilton lathe and turn it down, cut the piece off and actually put it in the south bend to finish it off and just because I had to forge on the Hamilton and it was a case I wasn't going to screw around just to put the piece back in there for three seconds to face the other end off so just threw it in the south bend quick and I think there's a little, well I finally got a good deal on tools that, been watching all you guys always find these good deals all over at the swap meets or flea markets or any of that. And, well, I never get that lucky and find the good stuff, but the guy I originally got the lathe from had a hell of a deal for me. You know, show some quick shots of that stuff. And, and I think I've got yeah, a little more of the pictures. Got the tires and rims on the tractor and everything, so it's looking more like a tractor now. Quick shot of that at the end. And I don't think I'm won't be on this video, we've got a Massey Ferguson that put a connecting rod through the oil pan so we're pulling the motor on that to rebuild that so that'll probably be a video coming up this week or so, we've got quite a bit of footage on that and had to make a tool for uh, driving the sleeves out of the cylinders and everything that way so if you like what you see please subscribe and otherwise hope you enjoy the videos this is part of the air ventilator pump on a John Deere 50 it goes on the fan shaft actually all it does is pumps air through this little hole actually that's the one that comes out so it's actually blowing through here into the crankcase takes the gases out through here and they go into the breather tube back through the carb and burn them up basically their theory was back then that the, having forced air through the crankcase helps get all the corrosive gases out of the engine compartment and it's, well, I'll zoom you in a little bit in a minute here. Might show up all right there, too. There's some fairly deep grooves in here. I wasn't going to mess with it, but decided it would be better to shave a little off if I can do it without knocking it out of the chuck. I'll bring you over and show you the setup in the back here a little bit, too, or I can show you afterwards, I guess, actually, too, if it works. But I swept around the very center there and swept around this outer edge and I've got it within a thousandth of an inch now or less less than a thou. It's actually yeah, a little more than a half a thou, a little less than a thou, so about six, seven tenths probably. So we'll get our tools set up and, and I figure I'm gonna take pretty light passes because of the way it's fastened in there. It's uh, because of having the fan shaft, the tube that goes onto that, and this other little breather tube that takes the air up to the to where your air intake is. I've got her offset. And I just hope it's going to work. <laughs> I'll find out in a minute. I didn't actually, as you can see, didn't center it this way. I centered sort of on the outer ring. I just did that approximate as I got going.
little bad spot shows up a little more. I think I'll do one more pass and call it good enough. Of course, I see the tool bit, the, the tool holder is right in the way of the, for you to see. Kind of chamfer that hole a little bit when I get it off of there. And that's actually what I was talking about. This is where a tube goes in, there's a rubber packing in there and a nut that holds it in place and just compresses that packing against the tube. This one gets a big o-ring in, that's where the tube for the fan shaft itself goes. And the shaft is a three-quarter inch shaft running through the center that turns the fan. Came out pretty nice. Like I say, I got that one little spot there when I chamfer this a little bit to clean that up. And I'll probably even chamfer these a little just to clean her up. Should be good to go. Get it over there, get it painted now, and get her back together. And that John Deere 50 I'm working on, the pin here is pretty well rotted away, corroded, and rusted away on the bottom. And this is just a pin that holds the clutch lever into the linkage there. So I've got a piece, so it's about 625 outside. So I've just got a piece of 5 8 in here. I'm going to face it off and turn it down to size. Which 493 by the looks of it. So we'll go to it. 630 on the piece.
cut, taking 100 bells and off diameter. South Bend 10 inch. But it's easier than setting it back up in the four jaw again. I didn't get it all cleaned up from the last time I used it either. by hand and we'll file it even. Bump the camera again. Bump it all the time. Still haven't made my other mount.
it'll do it. The original one even had to leave turning marks in there. So that's why I went a little quicker to leave some marks. And that'll do it. This is a radiator core out of the John Deere 50 tractor. It was getting pretty bad. I didn't even see that spot at the very bottom there before. <laughs> it's got some bad spots. I figured it's better off to get a new core than take a chance on this one since I'm redoing the rest of the tractor. And this is a new core that's going into it. We've got it in the housing. I still got to tighten up all the bolts and everything that way. And one thing didn't know on these, these side panels do only fit one way. They look like they're made identical as far as the casting and everything that way, but it's actually a case that they have a right and a left to them because the holes are offset in here. And when I was first working on putting gaskets in and everything, it didn't want to cooperate. This is laying where the side that's down towards the table here is what goes towards the engine in the tractor and this is originally the John Deere 50's early models this is actually a thermostat that would open and close the shutters that are on here and I'll get a shot of that some other time but this doesn't actually work anymore dad had it disconnected years ago and, but <laughs> a friend of mine and I we fought the radiator quite a while until finally figured out what was going on and now if it was flipped over there's actually little marks that somebody put in maybe when they redid it there's chisel marks one two three and four for lining parts up well we didn't find that out until about the time we had it figured out otherwise but figure we did good though we got parts left over so we must have done it right well they finally found a deal like some of you guys do the this is all stuff that the guy originally bought the Hamilton 14 inch lathe from years ago. Called me up, said he had some other stuff that he came across that thought I might be interested in. And so I went over to his place, check it out. You got a nice stare at the button back indicator here. And it's actually, well, pretty yellow face, but it's nice and smooth. And could use a good cleaning and everything that way and actually got an extra clamp with it and everything else and hasn't been used much truthfully it's a nice shape little you now it's a homemade machinist square got some guy's name on it and real good stirrup micrometer here zero to one mic does have the ratchet on it bunch of different high-speed tooling and just kind of separated it for a hell of it see what brands there were and, and a couple out of Sweden here little pieces and a bunch of crucible uh, some brand new stuff and some are already used for <laughs> ground for whatever you want to use them for now just handy at times like outside screwball was talking about it one time he likes getting hold of the all the ones that are pre-ground because you can quite often grab one that'll work for you and ready to go. Some of these will fit in the boring bars I've got and everything and, and I actually picked up a couple boring bars well I, you had another one there I didn't didn't really need the three-quarter inch I've got a three-quarter and a one inch and and now well, this one I see now that I got it back here is actually an Aloris and this half inch is an Armstrong and it's got the bushing on to adapt it. And the three-quarter holder or anything that way. And this guy, I think, is just, oh, it is a USA one. Three-quarter by three-quarter. Brand new carbide and braised carbide. Bunch of smaller, some three-eighths and half-inch and quarter-inch. Most of those have been well used. Some are ground where they're pretty sharp yet. One cut off, which looks like it's brand new. Don't see any marks on it or anything that way. And even came with a tray from a little toolbox to put everything in. And actually, the Acme thread gauge, which is a brown and sharp, 
I don't think that's going to show up in this light. But yeah, actually it will. In a 30, 45, 60, well, everything needs a lot of cleaning up. And brown and sharp here too. And a couple of woodruff key cutters here that are, you know, seen better days. They can be sharpened again though. And couldn't find any name on the ream here. But it'll be handy. It's actually in pretty nice shape yet. Even a piece of soapstone. A few little broken off little taps. Scrap metal there. And had a long quarter inch mill that got snapped off. These little pieces here, I'm not sure what they had those for. Part of them have got a piece of shim stock on them. They all look like they were cut off with a hacksaw. I kind of wonder if they weren't put into wedge something together and cut off afterwards and then ground smooth. You guys know, leave me a comment and let me know. <laughs> Lots of little pieces, all different thicknesses. Part of them got shim stock on, part don't. They had them taped together to hold them in place until they clamped it in or whatever they did do with them. Probably something real common that I just don't know. And a few reams here. I haven't really looked at those that close to see. They actually look pretty good. A couple mills that, you know, they aren't in too good a shape there. Some center drills that didn't really check those out yet. That one's been laying in something for a while. And then some other rods and I'm not sure what they had those for either. These look like they're probably brass. I'll have to do a hardness test on them. I'm kind of wondering on these if they might not be drill stock. But these looking like brass unless they are. Well, I'll do some checking. But anyway, the hole works, including the button back indicator here, and everything that just got done showing you, I paid 40 bucks for, so I figure, I think I did all right. Well, actually, this little telescoping gauge here is a Lufkin, and so I figure for 40 bucks, I finally got a good deal. Well, it's starting to look a little more like a tractor. If the center's on, well, I need to go through and touch up all the nuts on it yet. You can see it chips a lot of the paint off when you're torquing them, 150 foot-pounds. Still don't like the black end of the axle, but <laughs> I'm going to live with it. And the front ones they do have touched up already, so they're looking pretty nice. And the radiator is setting in there. And off of the bolts over here is where the air filter hangs. This one's a water pipe that comes down, comes out about in this height probably, and goes back to this one. It's a two and three quarter OD water pipe. And in part of the, well, the first part of the video here is showing the fan shaft goes on there, and that's where that pump actually fits into. I think a lot of the other stuff I'd kind of shown before. Just a quick look at what's been going on. This is actually where the the other part of the pump for the ventilator pump was two notches. Get a round bearing in. You can you know set it down here and something. There's a gap over on this side over here, and it's tighter over here, so that's what makes it pump the air. That's the bevel gear that drives it. The hole off. <laughs> Hard to do one-handed here, sorry about that. The hole 
off to the side over here is where it pulls the air into the pump then blows it out that other hole it actually pulls it out of the crankcase through that hole 